good morning once again. Uh, here we are today. It's uh, Wednesday the 11th of September and it's the big day. <laughs> renewal day. Uh, renewal of my passport. Or not very passport. Sorry. Renewal of my visa. So I just wanted to go through uh, what I'm prepared with so that the people who are watching this channel and going through similar challenges can see what I have to deal with. Why doesn't that stay on my desk? Anyway, um, <clears throat> here we go. Um, yeah, again, look, you know, this is just one of those information videos. There's so much hype about the TM30 and everything else that's going on. I'll give you a bit of a rundown on, on my situation in this one. Uh, so you obviously understand where I'm coming from on the whole, you know, anti-TM30. Uh, look, it's one of those things. Everybody has a different experience. Um, we're off to Changwatera today to, you know, that's the Division 1 in the Bangkok province. Every other province is different, so, um, you know, it's going to be, it's a, it's a potluck thing. Anyway, uh, let's get down to it. So, I don't know if you can see this very well, but first of all, I have my uh, TM47, which is my 90-day reporting. And there's the receipt from the last one. It's due on the 12th of September. It's the 11th of September today. I'm doing it a day early because it's just Wednesday. It's an easy day for us to get out. Um, for the TM, for the TM, for the, uh, sorry, sorry, again, for the 90-day uh, reporting, the TM47, it's a fairly simple process. Uh, there's a number of ways you can do that. You can do it by post. You can um, do it uh, by our agency. You can... Uh, uh, anyway, I prefer to, to run in and do it myself because anyway, I've got to go in there to do the present myself in person for the TM7 anyway. But yeah, so that's all you need when you do the 90 day report. It's just the, the, the one form, uh, you've got to bring the previous receipt um, and then stand in the queue. Okay, the big one, TM47. So again, it's a fairly simple form, it's only two pages long. Um, we just flick through here, two pages here, what it suggests you need to do, actually that one's a Thai version, uh, where's the English version, it's in here somewhere, let me just get it for you. Yeah, so basically in this version, so applicants must have a non-immigrant visa type O, applicant must be 50 years of age or older, applicant must, is not, uh, must, uh, the applicant is not permitted to, uh, right, the, what they're sort of saying, Right, you are given permission to stay in Thailand. We basically don't they don't take criminals. Um, having evidence of uh, financial security, um, and uh, uh, the applicant is prohibited from working in Thailand. Right? Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. So all I need to do there is uh, uh, applicant form for extension of the uh, yeah t the TM7, which is what I've got, and I, that's the pay previous page there. Passport and evidence of the financial situation. That's all that's required for doing your uh, renewal process. But, yes, the process, the, but, the, the big but of this thing here is the fact that, uh, yes, there is it on, on page two on that, there's also a photo you've got to produce as well, which I'm not going to go into there, but it's a photo stapled to that there, and uh, it's in there sort of somewhere. Um, it's all nicely filed, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. Um, the big but is, of course, in my situation. What I've been reading online is the fact that the, this TM30 needs to be all in order. Now, in my case, the TM30 was done uh, in 2016, and there is my um, what my tear-off slip now. When Pa did this. Um, he gave me the, the, the tear-off piece to, to file, or that's the piece that they give you back. Um, now that's the evidence of the fact that I have had a TM30 filed. Now in my case here is the fact that that was done three years ago. I asked Pa to make some phone calls uh, last, well, two couple of weeks ago to immigration to verify the fact that it's still all in order and there's nothing else untoward or any sort of difficulties that I might have. Um, he made six different phone calls to six different people in immigration and nobody could give, me, give him an answer. So it's a real sort of a, a grey area, a mystery, right? I, exactly why it would be such a problem, I don't know. But anyway, so I've got the receipt. That sort of says that a TM30 was filed by the landlord or by the housemaster uh, on my behalf 
right for my um, for my stay in Thailand. I've not filled in a TM30. I've not stayed in a hotel where they've required my identification. I've not stayed in an Airbnb where they've required identification. They've not. That basically a TM30 has not been filed ever since then. This one here should still be in existence. It still should be in a computer record. But failing that, I've also got my Tabian barn just to make sure the fact that if there's any complications, you know, like this matches that, matches that, everything else, it all matches up. So hopefully it should be a fairly clean run. But that's the big problem. Nobody seems to be getting a clean run. Yes, this, this whole clean run thing, sort of like as I said, you try to do everything you can in your power, right, as per what is documented for the process, which is really what gets frustrating. It doesn't say anything about the TM30, right, and as I said, if you're, if you're a tourist, you don't worry about it because you're coming in the country, hotels are doing for you, if hotels aren't doing it for you, then you're leaving the country and, and, and nothing's being raised, nothing happens. Right, it's these people who actually live here. You know, they got work visas, they got retirement visas, they got marriage visas. Um, uh, they got uh, you, you get the idea. It's it's the people who actually want to stay here that are sort of being the ones being inconven inconvenienced. The whole thing is a security aspect to dealing with you know the the influx of you know the bad players here in Thailand. And as you know, Thailand is one of the you know most visited countries around the world. Uh, and of course, this you know, because the what I would say the um, the lax uh, enforcement of the current law set, uh, a lot of criminals come in here and they sort of take advantage of that because you know the the good nature of the Thai people, and this is what you know the whole TM30 is supposed to be sort of you know eradicating, as I've been sort of pointing out in the forums that I've been enjoined in, you know working with. Um, the criminals aren't going to be using a TM30 anyway. They have got a they've got a sort of a, a range of places that they stay at, and those places just simply do not get involved in reporting at all because <laughs> it's the underworld. Um, the people who are being inconvenienced is the people who are legitimately staying here and sort of you know want to stay here permanently, and we are the good guys. <laughs> In my case, as I said, that is in my case, I have you know a unique situation. Like I'm registered under Pars and Blue Book. That's uh, Shanya's dad. Uh, so I have my yellow book, right? I've gone through what they call a complete vetting process and sponsorship of Thai people, um, who have has been verified by the local council uh, or the local AMFOR, uh, and primarily I'm one of the good guys. This is this is my house. Okay, it might be sort of you know, a rented property, but it's, it's, it's my house. This is where I stay. You know, uh, if you want to find me, come to my house. That's it. You know, come to this. If, if, if I'm not here, I'm out shopping or something, and you know, somebody will be here just to say, well, he's out shopping, wait two hours and he'll be back home, or something like that. Um, but the big inconvenience is the fact that you know, the, the hype is that they're making all this thing up so that... Um, yeah, this is saying they're making it easy. They're trying to make a computer system so you can log in with your phone, right, or log in on a website, um, put your details in, and it's all done, which is all well and good. But what happens if you're a 70 year old senior, you know, in Thailand, you don't have a mobile phone that is, you know, like uh, web capable, right? In this is the past case, so he can't install the app. Right, he doesn't have a computer. He doesn't have a computer connection. Nobody's paying for that. They, these sort of things cost money, you know, and he's, he's a pensioner, right? Or well, I don't even know if it. Basically, he doesn't uh, doesn't earn a living in, in the normal sense of the word. He's he's not employed, right? He's seventy odd years old, so right, <clears throat> he doesn't have a, a working computer, right? Uh, well, I think they did have a computer, and there's running Windows XT in you know, the last time I saw, but. Who knows whether it works now? I don't know. Uh, he doesn't have an internet connection because that costs just you know four, five, six hundred, or in our case, seven hundred and fifty baht a month. You know, like he his lease for his land that he's got his house on, and it costs him five hundred baht a month. So you know, spending seven hundred and fifty baht a month just to have an internet connection sort of doesn't make sense. So he's inconvenienced the fact that if I actually go out and I do get registered at a hotel somewhere else, right? When I get back, he's the one who's got to trek in to Changwatera, and it's a it's an hour's drive at the best, right? An hour and a half's drive at the worst, right? There's no public transport that links up, so it's a rather big inconvenience for him. 
Uh, there is a, a postal option, right, but he's got to get down to the local post office and do a registered mail uh, with the documentation. And this is where I think it's really sort of, you know, quite a, an abhorrent sort of, you know, treatment of the Thai nationals who live here and are just trying to do the right thing. Um, so that's my, my biggest take on this thing. But anyway, look, uh, I don't want to sort of, you know, wrap this thing into a whole big, you know, anti-TM30. It's a good idea that they should be keeping an eye on people. Uh, how about a three-day... Um, you know, leeway on that situation would be a, probably a, an improvement. So if you're away for more than three days, then you have to file it um, and things like that. Um, <clears throat> as I said, the, the, the criminals aren't going to be bothered with it, right? They, they, they're, they're the underworld. They're, they're not at all concerned with what the Thai authorities are going to do. They already have ways and means around them. Anyway, so I've got Shania getting ready. She's got to putting her makeup on now, and then we're going to head off. And we'll keep you posted throughout the video or throughout the day about how things are going. Oh my God, the drama is just with the traffic getting in here. Oh my God. Um, one of these days, I'm going to try to sort of stingicate the Thai people. The fact that Google Maps usually knows the best route, but you know, to keep the peace, you say no. You follow the Thais, and of course, you know, Google gave me one hour and twenty minutes as a ride here. And finally, two hours later, we actually get here um, because we went the Thai way. Don't ask me. It's just one of those things. Anyway, we're at Citibank. Just going to get my statement and then we'll be on to the next stop, next, next leg. Okay, cool. Okay, so here we are at immigration. Uh, I ran ahead to get my ticket L120 or number 120 or number 78 in the queue. So it'll be definitely after lunch before we get in. Um, but we've been on the road since 7.30 this morning. I think everybody wants a drink. So they need to go and sort that out for people. And uh, we'll catch up with you shortly. So, so I got uh, the ticket. Uh, we just had lunch here at Chester's. Um, which has taken about 20 minutes. And I've just checked the number. So they've done 10 in 20 minutes. Which looks like they're doing about 30 an hour. So that means, you know, uh, we'll be in about 1.30, that'll be our number. But again, one of the things that I've noticed here is it probably takes them half an hour to actually get themselves you know, up and running after their lunch break. So they might have an hour lunch break, but it's pretty much you know, not operational again for about like half an hour after that. So 1.30, so we might be in about by 2 o'clock. All good. Um, one of the things that Pa is here with us as well, what I want to try to do is I want to see what he can uh, glean about the e-services that are available. I still can't find that app on the Play Store, uh, so it might be an Apple app, I don't know. Um, my, um, my TM47 uh, app finally did accept my username and password, but I, I'm waiting for the authentication email to come through, so that's another thing. I'll make sure people have a, you know, a handle on that as well when we do the wrap-up. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's just a waiting time now and see how we go. It seems as if we've got a bit of a magic show going on today for us. We've got an hour to kill. That's what's the magic. No, I'm not going to report it. Oh my god, what an ordeal it was today. I definitely got the impression that uh, the good guys that they talk about in Thailand, I definitely got an impression that they don't even want the good guys here in Thailand anymore. Uh, just the drama. So the, the rundown is, uh, so I, you, you, my audience already knows, if you watch the previous videos, I have a Citibank Thailand account. I keep uh, the necessary float of money uh, to qualify, the minimum of 800000 I actually keep more than that. But uh, yeah, it's been in that bank for three years. I just keep on topping it up. That's, that's the way I run my life here in Thailand. So, um, today I was told that uh, no, Citibank Thailand is not a Thai bank anymore. So I had to write out an affidavit to say that next time I do the renewal, which is next year, I am, am going to endeavor to take, uh, uh, take out a Thai bank account, which of course means a lot of mucking around I need to transfer the money out of Citibank into, into something like Casacon or something like that. Oh my God, seriously. The drama and the ordeals of something as simple as uh, renewing your visa. It is ludicrous. Yeah, so anyway, so the, apart from that, yes, the TM30, okay, the rundown of the TM30. 
I had to present the receipt um, to my um, the, the, the receipt that we got when we registered um, the address with the TM33 years ago. I had to show that receipt right as part of the process for um, it well that was interesting I had to sort of stop everything there the the king just passed through uh, so I forgot what I'd lost my train of thought where, where I was in that uh, particular discussion um, yes yeah, so the TM30 yes it's a it's a big thing that's going on here now um, I said I've not registered anywhere else uh, in Thailand on the TM30 so it's still registered in my father's house they wanted photocopies of that to file oh, the paperwork I really don't know what they're doing like they're, seriously it's just getting to be beyond a joke like I think there were sort of 12 documents I had to fill out and sign um, along with the affidavit that I'm telling them that I'm going to have a, a, a Thai bank account next year but I've got a Thai bank account. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So um, anyway, so a bunch of dramas. And of course, because of, uh, they're trying to find supervisors to sign off on things because it's like an out of the book situation. Like there's, there's no paint by number um, for these uh, particular instances. Like you know, a person who has been turning up and doing their visa based on a Citibank you know, a minimum you know, deposit account. Um, which has been accepted for the last two years. They don't tell you that the make that the law has changed. Citibank doesn't tell you that there's, that there's going to be an issue. So I'll be talking to Citibank tomorrow because, quite frankly, they're going to get a bit pissed off that I'm going to move my money out of that bank into another bank after I get it all set up. So I'm after now back to Pekka Samuelson. But the girls, uh, Shanya and Pa, they're just waiting in the air conditioning of the of the building. Um, so I just got to go and pick them up, uh, and then we'll sort of make our way to um, to uh, you know Petkasem. That could obviously be a, a godsend, which means you know doing the bank account and everything else. At least I'll have a bank book, right? Which is one of the things that always confused the last two years, and they were always concerned with City Bank because it didn't have a bank book. I haven't had a bank book for 35 years, or well, probably longer. Well, I was at 45 years. Uh, I think the last time I had a bank, a bank book would have been for, you know, like I was 12 years old. You know, we, we all went electronic after that. You know, it's bloody crazy. Um, why Thailand starts to have bank books for, you know, some sort of their authorization is completely sort of so backwards. Thailand 4.0? Really? <laughs> they think they're just going to have to lift their game. Seriously, guys. Uh, anyway, so a lot of dramas, and of course the world last drama that I had, um, they closed the the, the 90 day check in counter or any ticket uh, you know, allocation at 3:30, and because of the fact that I was delayed there two hours while I was finding supervisors to sign off and all the bullshit, um, of course we've drifted past the 3:30. So I went back in and sort of pretty much didn't demand. But you know, fairly sternly, sort of said, because it took so long, I can no longer do my TM30, uh, my my uh, T, uh, my, my 90 day check in. Um, and so one of the girls, you know, the, her her supervisor, sort of said, just go and fix it. So she walked me around there, and we saw that out. So I managed to get both done today. But yeah, talk, talk about dramas, um, guys here. You know, like seriously, I got the severe impression that we're, not, we're no longer welcome here in the country. And that's the bottom line. It is absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, so in closing, yeah, we're just here at Pizza Hut. <laughs> it's close off the day, like Pa, he's been running around blue, like a blue ass fly with us. And uh, we took him along just in case there was any complications with the, um, with the TM30, because it's actually his house. Um, we'll, we'll cover that one a bit later on in another video. We're recording the live stream that I've got coming up. Um, but other than that, uh, it's been a long day. Uh, I've now set up myself a Casicon uh, bank. Um, so we've got that all set up when we've got the Petkus in. Um, so ultimately, everything's all, all ready for next year. All I've got to do is just make sure that I can still do the banking transfers from Australia uh, to here. Um, that's something I'll do around a test run tonight with transfer wise. Um, if that all works, then I'm going to go into Citibank and just say, "Up you, Citibank! You know, you've you've done you've done your dash. You can't comply with Thai law or something. Not my problem, but I'm pulling my money out. So stuff you. Um, so I'm, I'm really feeling dirty about the whole Citibank issue. Really, uh, going to like it comes down to Thailand's immigration. Uh, 
we're always the last one to know. Um, everything at like they did, they did waive the banking the issue. Like they've accepted the Citibank uh, bank statements on my behalf. I had to write an affidavit, as I said, uh, to say that I would get a new bank account. Uh, so they accepted that, but that had to actually be sort of signed off by the head of immigration. That's really what took so long, was trying to track him down. Um, or head of immigration at uh, Division 1, at least, anyway. Oh my God, it's been a hell of a day. Anyway, so, um, you know, there's a lot of people sort of having this uh, TM30, you know, debacle, conjecture that's going on. Yeah, quite frankly, it, you know, it, it, is, it is relevant, but uh, ultimately, in our case, it's... Uh, uh, that was the least of our worries. Anyway, so I'm going to wrap it up here. Don't forget, here's my lovely girl. She's going to sign off. You're going to sign off, are you? What'd you say? Like, subscribe, yeah? <laughs> no, with a mouthful of food, why not, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> it's all right, so yeah, it's all right, got you. We always like me to catch her out. She's always doing this behind my back, yeah. <laughs> So, so I'm going to catch you around at me so often as well. Anyway, we'll catch up with you later. Subscribe and write and share. <laughs> Have to enjoy. Have to enjoy. <laughs> Bye now. Catch you later. Wait, wait. Oh my god. She bounced the cancer with the camera. <laughs> photo bomb. That's not how you do a photo bomb. Anyway, catch you later, guys.